Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel. What a beautiful day. How you guys and girls doing? Hope you're doing great as always. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. Also drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. So in today's video, the plan is to make different types of enemies and make sure we get different amounts of points for those enemies. Now there are several ways to do this. You could make classes of enemies, which I would rather do. Um, but since we're not really working with classes yet that much, uh, the only class we have is the game class. Um, so we're not going to use an enemy class. We're going to make it a little simpler for you guys who want to make a little simpler solution. So the first step is going to be to get a type of enemy. And we might want to have five different types of enemies. Since without classes, there's going to be a lot more code involved. Uh, we probably don't want a lot of enemy, uh, enemy types. So I'm going to have about five different enemy types. And I'm going to contain that in here in the spawn enemy class. So as soon as we spawn the enemy, right here, I'm going to randomize enemy type. It's going to be very simple. I'm just going to have an int type equals rand. And I'm going to say from 0 to 4. All right. And that's going to be my enemy types. Now, I'm going to make a switch statement saying uh, type in here. Now, I like this, like what I said. It's going to take a lot more code than if we were um, working with classes. Because here we're going to have to make a little case for each of the different enemy types. And for those of you who are kind of more new with programming and, and don't really work with classes, this might be an easier solution. So I'm going to say case 0, break. And let's just start off with case 0 first. So if our enemy is of type 0, we want this to be the hardest type of enemy. And what that's going to do is that's going to color code the enemy. So the hardest, I want the hardest one to be magenta. All right, let's just say it's magenta. And that's going to mean that I want to set a size of the enemy. Now I'm going to go up here in the function. I'm just going to grab this line where we set the size. And I might want to just, or should we work in scales? Now we'll, we'll, we'll work with, with sizes. What we could do is we had the scale thing for, oh sorry, we had the scale thing for demonstration. I'm just going to leave it like that. And I'm going to copy this line and put it in my case right here. So the hardest type, I want that to be 10, 10. So very small, right? Just like that. And it's going to be color coded to magenta. So it's going to be that color. I'm going to copy this case. And now you can see why it's going to be a lot more code. And this would be something um, someone who's not used to working with classes, like I said, would do. So there we go. With a classes, we might have just one line here and it would solve everything. Uh, but for this sake, we'll do this. Now, uh, the type 1 enemy might be a little easier, maybe 30-30. We'll color code that enemy blue. This might be 50-50. And then we have 70-70 and 100-100. All right. And so blue, what else colors do we have? Maybe cyan there. I want the easiest one to be green. And I want this to be maybe red. Whatever, something like that. Uh, once you have all this down, you might want to set the default case to just something, whatever, like that. Maybe yellow, so you know something went wrong in this randomization. But once these lines are set, you should be able to get your enemy out. And I'm going to remove that line, because otherwise it's going to set it to green, no matter what. We don't want that. It sets the position randomly. Okay, let's alter this as well. Test their colors and positions um, sets their positions randomly. Um, their type colors and types and colors. Let's we'll see how how do you call and colors colors. There we go. Types and colors. Oops. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, something like that. Whatever. You can you can kind of spawn them at random positions. Random. Something like that. I, that that'll be fine. 
that'll be fine. Um, diff. Okay, good. Once that's done, we'll add that enemy to our vector. Good. And that should be spawned. Now we need to actually check when we kill the enemy what type it was. And like I said, we color coded them. So getting that type is going to be through the colors. And to get the color, this is when we get killed. This is where we kill the enemy itself. So if it contains, there we go, and we delete the enemy. Basically, all this is gonna, um, all this is gonna affect is the points. So I'm gonna make a little switch case. Or we're just gonna do if statements here. If this enemies uh, at position i, and we need to do that before we actually erase. Remember to do this before we erase the enemy. We don't want to do that after. Because then you're going to try to access something that is after. Uh, there we go. We're just going to remove this points thing as well. Oh, wait. Keep it right now. We need to debug that. So, dot get fill color. If this enemies equals SF color magenta. And that was our hardest enemy. Then we're going to do this points e plus equals 10. All right. Else if. Just copy this. Here we go. Else if, what was the other one? Blue. We'll get seven points. Else if, feel free to fast forward here because I'm just going to do this tedious stuff. Magenta, then we had cyan. Yo, my memory is on point today. There we go. Uh, then we had red. That will give three. That's just going to give one on green. So basically, that's a long, long, uh, what do you call it? Or a big bunch of code. Unnecessary big bunch of code. But for this sake, for this purpose, it's okay. So I just want you to remember that. This isn't the best way to do it. It's just a simple way for you guys who don't want to work with classes again. And we'll work with points here. Good. Good. Okay. So once that's done, you should be fine with the color coding and everything. If we run this, you know, fish for some of these bugs. We'll see if it crashes. Uh, whoops. Okay. All right, did that work? Okay, did work, it seems. Yo, look at that. Okay. Okay, that's great. Oh, those are, those are tiny, dude. Holy crap. Okay. Those are tiny. <laughs> All right, but I'm getting a lot more points. Oh, my God. I can't click those. Okay. There you go. <laughs> I guess that works. You're going to have to play around with the speed and how many enemies are spawned and all that stuff. So before I end, I just want to maybe have something like five here and get these, maybe put that to 20 on health. And maybe we're going to change the spawn timer to 20 as well. So we just chill out a little bit. And we could make the game harder and so on. But I think I'm just going to end the, oh my God. Okay. Yeah, that is insane as well. Okay, that works. Yo, this is this is cool. This is good if you want to practice your aim. Mouse skills. Okay, yeah, fine. I'm not going to keep playing. But there you go, guys and girls. That's our game finished, I'd say. At least this one. In the next game, I'm, I'm going to try to have a background. I'm going to have to try to do some more cool stuff. Maybe use classes a little more. So this was just a, like a first little game we could try. Uh, with text and colors and boxes just to kind of learn and get a get a feel of sfml um, and there are a few things you could do way differently if you wanted to but i do recommend you keep the structure with the game class no matter what level you are in programming and have this structure where you just divide everything up nicely and, and so you know what's going on right so if you have a bunch of update functions you know which one to go in and look if you're looking for something specific as well as initialization. I know you can miss to write these in your constructors and stuff. Uh, so don't do that. I did that mistake. I made that mistake. But make sure you always call the ones you're defining. Otherwise, you'll see some weird behavior like, why isn't this happening? Uh, so you're going to want to do that. But other than that, this structure is great. It just helps, uh, helps keep everything organized, which is a big part of programming, right? So there you go. Again, guys and girls, thank you so much for the support. 
uh, on this series and every other series. I uh, really, really enjoyed all the nice comments and everything. So keep it up. Keep working hard. I'll see you guys and girls in the next game that we're going to make. And I'm going to think of something real nice to do. All right. So take care. Good luck. I'll see you guys and girls in the next one. Bye-bye.